So we've been looking for an e-bike to be our camping companion. We are trying to find a way to get food midweek without taking our car and long distances. We're looking for a way to get into those hard to get boondocking sites where we're afraid of, will there be a spot for the trailer to turn around? Just send in the e-bike, scout it out and send us in carefully. And then really just using the bike to see all these beautiful trails that are surrounding all the campsites we go to. But to me, the question really comes down to, are these collapsible portable e-bikes small enough and light enough to fit into our small camper trailer life? So that's what we're gonna tackle today in this video. This doesn't look like much, but this is where they told me to go. They said there was a race here maybe a year or two ago, um, and that I'd see where people had pulled over, but there is no remnants of humans here. But I did see a bit of a single track going downhill. So this is not gonna be your typical review. This is an Espen Nesta. It's a bike that has been reviewed all over online and everybody loves it, right? And that's why we got this bike. It comes 90% assembled. My mom put it together in 20 minutes. I think if she was going to do it a second time, it'd only take her 10 minutes. And don't give me a hard time, I was filming. I would have helped her. It does get the true 40 miles on the battery I'm seeing in all the reviews. Um, this is a solid bike. I know that, that's why I got this bike. This is more about, does it fit in the small camper lifestyle? Is it worth hauling out? Does it get small enough to fit in every vehicle I own or have used? So that's what we're gonna go through today. So I'm gonna just take it up a hill for you and we're gonna get right into my tow vehicles and how this fits in them. Does it fit in teardrop trailers? And then what I would use it for out at the campsite and then kind of test it out. Uh, yeah, she climbs well, but she still makes you work for it. So the first thing I wanted to do was test it by putting it into the Jeep. Because those of you who own a Jeep, you know, there is nothing smaller in terms of space in the cargo area of a Jeep. So I threw it in there and I thought it wasn't going to fit. So then I go to the front and I throw down the seats and I pull in the bike. And there was a ton of room doing it that way, but I really wanted it to fit in the back so my family could have their space and then the bike could go. So I went back and uh, used my brain this time and I just turned it upright. And going upright, it fit nice and easy in the Jeep and there was plenty of room to shut the door and put in other items. Okay, so it fits in a Jeep, great. Now I wanna see, does it fit on the front of the tongue on a cargo trailer or really any teardrop trailer? So I threw it up on there on the cargo rack, tons of space on there. I think that bike could easily fit on my four x eight traditional teardrop. <sighs> but what about that tongue weight, Drew? And uh, uh, yeah, you're right. If I put 65 pounds on the tongue for most small trailers that's just going to push it over the edge so the most obvious thing to do is put it inside the teardrop and so with the bean trailer with the oversized door i was easily able to make it fit in and so i think i could have fit this into my standard 4x8 teardrop as well especially with two people guiding it in and i love the forward thinking of bean trailer on this design in that they added four tie down points this way i was able to move the bed and just tuck it under the cabinet roll the bike up in there and then secure them down nice and level to the floor So one thing to note here, this bike, as I can tell right now on this incline, is quite heavy. Uh, my mom told me it's about 65 pounds. I don't know how much it is with the battery off. But my worry was once it's folded, is this going to be too heavy to lift? And I was really surprised to find that once it was folded down, the weight was distributed nicely. So if it was below shoulder length, as a single person, even my mom at 66 years old, she was able to carry this around really easy. So was I. But I did find once I'm getting it up high, it is a bit difficult to put into vehicles, to throw it up on top of the tongue box, things like that. I love the throttle assist here. So yeah, not only does it have five levels of pedal assist, level five's like rocket boosters, there's also a throttle. So that'll let you to ride it just like a motorcycle, no pedaling at all. And so. I'll use that pedal assist coming up this hill just to push up the bike, or not the pedal assist, but the throttle. But you can tell by my, I mean, I am out of shape, but it's tiring still. You still get a workout from these little e-bikes. 
So obviously if it fits inside the back of the Jeep and it fits on the tongue of the trailer, it's going to fit in a hatchback, uh, especially a wagon like our Outback. So the next thing to try was my little sedan. And obviously the little sedan, it's got a really small trunk. So this here is the trunk of our little Honda Accord. We have used this in the family for years and now it's retired as a ranch vehicle as you can see. And you wouldn't be able to fit the bike in this trunk, but with the weight of the bike, you could attach a cargo carrier to this receiver and I think you would be in business. And then obviously you can use any bike rack that's designed for fat tire bikes. Just make sure you consider the weight when looking at brands that this is a 65 pound bike. But uh, I need to start heading back before it gets dark, shoot down this canyon. The bike does have a light, which is a pretty neat feature, but I wanna talk later about all the other features of the camping components and then those sturdy racks and what they can do for you. Okay, real world, honest update here. Putting the bike in before my trip, easy. Putting it back after my whole body is fatigued, I wouldn't suggest doing it for one person. It's definitely a two person job, I could see you Scratching up your teardrop, scratching up your bike, you know, something like that. Too hot out here biking. What am I picking up from the store? Uh, we need some more baby wipes, a watermelon if there's any, and then um, crunchy peanut butter. All right, I successfully made it to town. I got myself a watermelon, some peanut butter, and the baby wipes. And no joke, May can get through that watermelon in one day by herself. Aim for the cattails. Is this thing a beast or what? As you can see, a full-size watermelon's deep in here. All my camera gear, drones, hats, backup clothes. This can carry a lot of gear. And to get some bonus points with May, I got some Pakistani food. They have a nice little Pakistani food stall in town, so that never hurts. Grandma, you gonna show us your handstand? No, 66 and rocking the handstand. You can do it, you can do it, you can do it. Who needs Got a swimming it. pool? Got it. I thought this might be fun for you guys in that I have in our family two of the, probably the two most popular step through bikes. The Rad, um, what is this one? The Rad Mini. And then over here, obviously, but this video, the Espen Nesta. And um, there's some differences. They're both great bikes. They're just different. And so I thought I'd go over it really quick. You can tell just by the dirt on this bike here, which bike the family fights for the most. This knobbier, wider tire obviously just does great in the sand. Once we get it off trails, just through the grass. But what surprises our family is this is the one that actually has less rolling resistance or it goes faster. So between the two bikes, this one's actually easier. It seems to coast quicker. And we, we don't really know or understand the physics behind it. But there is a mechanical difference between the two of these that definitely um, has a big difference in the speed of the two bikes. A big issue we find with the Rad Mini is there seems to be some sort of governor on it. So when you get up to 20, the electricity stops and it almost feels like it's kicking in the electric brake as well. I don't think it is, but you just feel like you're really working against the bike. Both bikes are limited by their gearing and they're designed to go around 20 miles per hour, but this S-Bin doesn't slow you down when you hit 20. So we get up to 30 miles per hour on this one easy. I've never gotten there with the Rad bike. And that's a big issue because when you go to town to get your camp food, you want to be going 25 miles per hour so you can go with the traffic. And I can't on the Rad, I can on this. Like I said, it's just fun. It's a snappier. So the Rad Mini, you do a lot more pedaling on your own. Even though they both go 40 miles on a charge, one of them feels just weaker on how it assists you. And that's the Rad versus this Espen. So a little correction here. My parents have been taking out the two brands of bikes side by sides through Colorado and the Midwest. And they're finding the Espen because it's a bit snappier is getting a little less in terms of distance on a charge, but they say it's pretty comparable still. So the Espen, let's say you're on one, the, the lowest pedal assist, it gives you all the power of one right away. 
where when you're on the rad, if you go on one, it ramps up the power slowly. It's like this gradual push. Some may like that. Our family kind of likes the woohoo, let's just get going sort of mode. And then when you get this up to five, this thing feels like a motorcycle. The rad, you still are doing a lot of pedaling with it. Um, so more bike than electric bike, where this one, I, it leans more towards electric bike than pedal bike. So it really just comes down to preference. And for our family, we just find this super fun. So time for the conclusion that might surprise you. And here's a little Easter egg for you guys who've been following the journey. I think you know where I'm at. We are big fans of these collapsible bikes, but I don't think they're for us in terms of our small camper life. So if you are going out only two to three, maybe four times a year, I think this is the way to go. You won't have to buy a specialized rack. It can fold into any transportation you have. But for me, I'm loving this e-bike and I'm going to be taking it with me everywhere. And so because of that, I think I would go with a more traditional Espen bike that they have that doesn't fold, that can fit in a standard rack. Yes, this bike's perfect for me at home because I can go through the sand on the beach and the grass and all that with the big tires. But you know, for the stuff I do looking for these boondocking sites, I think a thinner tire, a regular bike, it would be just fine for our family. So that's kind of my take on it, guys. If you are new to playing with sticks, check out our other episodes. I think if you're into finding secret spots like us, check out our boondocking video here. This is tips on how to find those sites. I don't think you're gonna find many of these tips other places, so it's kind of a gem. Other than that, stay safe out there and we'll see you all in the next episode.